have uh, really no mass support. They're there to have a presentable face that they can send to the United Nations uh, and, and so forth. So I would expect a bloody civil war to break out among the rebel factions uh, quite soon. And especially, we've got this 70-page report of what the occupation is going to look like. The, the occupation calls for tens of thousands of troops from the United Arab Emirates, Emiratis. Now, those guys are royalists. They're reactionaries in all of their social policies, whereas Gaddafi is one of the most progressive, uh, socially oriented people, right? All the oil money was used, or to a large extent, for, uh, for health care. For, yeah, for so they're going to send in foreigners to help make sure all the money is stolen. And to enforce uh, privatization, deregulation, the race to the bottom, the usual IMF shock therapy agenda. But if, if, if the foreign troops come in, even if they're so-called Arabs from the United Arab Emirates or even worse, Qatar, the, the, uh, the people there in Doha, that will lead to a civil war, I think, in short order. So my, my advice well, is... stay there. Stay so basically, absolute humanitarian disaster in the name of stopping one. What you're about to hear are the real experiences of women over 40 who finally lost weight by becoming hormonally balanced again. I lost 20 pounds. I lost 40 pounds. I lost 55 pounds. I went from a size 14 to a size 8. Their secret is Amberin, the revolutionary formula for women over 40 that balances hormones naturally. The leading cause of weight gain over 40 is hormonal imbalance. Until you balance your hormones, losing weight can be practically impossible. But Amberin restores hormonal balance naturally, so the weight can just fall right off, even that stubborn belly fat. Plus, Amberin eliminates other symptoms of hormonal aging, like hot flashes, night sweats, low libido, difficulty concentrating, and more. Be one of the first 50 callers right now, and they'll send you a complimentary risk-free trial with a 30-day supply, free. Call 1-800-737-9107. That's 1-800-737-9107. 1-800-737-9107. Congratulations to our friends at eFoodsDirect.com. In August, they celebrate 30 years in the long-term storable food business. To celebrate, eFoodsDirect.com is offering the lowest price ever on their one-year freedom food supply, even less than the price in 1981. For a limited time, you get 30% off a one-year freedom supply, which provides three hearty meals per day for one adult. The freedom supply includes a large variety of fruits and vegetables, dairy, legumes, grains, sprouting seeds, and more. Plus, you get a generous supply of their quick fix meals. This is the most complete, extensive, and affordable unit they have ever offered. Call 800 409 5633 or go to eFoodsDirect.com forward slash Alex and get 30% off a one year food supply. If you have ever considered getting a supply, now is the time. Call 800 409 5633. That's 800 409 5633 or eFoodsDirect.com forward slash Alex. If you drive for a living, you don't get paid to stop or wait in line. Keep your wheels moving with prepass. Bypass way stations. Fly by port of entry facilities. Stay moving at highway speed while the guy without prepass waits in line. Save time, save money. Call 888-401-PASS to try prepass free. That's 888-401-PASS. Hi, I'm Mark Craighead, founder of Crossbreed Holsters. I designed our top-selling holster, the Super Tuck Deluxe, to solve the problems of being poked, pinched, and gouged while carrying concealed. The Super Tuck Deluxe is the most comfortable, most concealable holster on the market today. We offer a two-week free trial and a lifetime warranty. Visit us at CrossbreedHolsters.com. Don't forget, CrossbreedHolsters.com. Webster Griffin Tarpley is our guest. I've seen three polls out this weekend where Ron Paul is number one. Uh, the Drudge Report at DrudgeReport.com, we're also posting this at Infowars.com, uh, has the headline that Ron Paul is evenly matched against Obama. Uh, he's neck and neck with Obama. There it is, Gallup. Obama closely matched against Paul and Bachman. So as I keep telling you, because I'm, I'm not just cheerleading here and saying Ron Paul can win, <clears throat> you know, three and a half years ago, I was just pointing out he's an underdog, but he should win. Now, if you look at all the hundreds of polls I've seen, different straw polls, he's number one, number two, or number three. Now, that is a front runner. 
That's with them ignoring him or demonizing him. So they're, they're definitely scared of Ron Paul. Uh, now, shifting gears back to Webster Griffin Tarpley of Tarpley.net. Uh, Webster, any way you slice it, I'm not a fan of Gaddafi. But compared to Al-Qaeda, there is such a thing as lesser of two evils. And he, and he wasn't a total pig. I mean, he, he did build up the country and the rest of Africa. So, and, and we know it means civil war, death, destruction uh, of a, a comparative jewel uh, in the region. And uh, this is the same reason they took down Serbia. Again, not a fan of Milosevic or any of those guys, but... Um, at the end of the day, why did NATO do this? Well, on the one hand, Gaddafi represents an ideological threat because of this uh, an Arab socialism, which he actually practiced. Uh, Libya probably has the best record of any oil-producing country in terms of reinvesting that in social development. They, they, this was the top country on the United Nations Human Development Index for Africa, and uh, they were at 57 in the world, which meant that they were beating Russia, beating Ukraine, beating Brazil, and it's remarkable because they had started so near rock bottom. They were absolute, uh, basically nomads until about 1965, 1970 when, when Gaddafi came in. Remember, you've got that great man-made river, which means that they're going to have water for the next couple of hundred years, uh, unless NATO has bombed it in the meantime. Uh, and that, uh, you know, health care was for free, housing allowances were given. These are the things that NATO hates. So they want to go in there now and privatize all that. And they had been, uh, the weakening of Gaddafi is due to the fact that there was a first privatization offensive in 2003 when they demanded the partial privatization of certain of the oil. And because he was, he was under the gun of what Bush had just done in Iraq, he felt that he had to make concessions. And unfortunately, that even reached up into his, into his family. And now it's admitted that the 70 plus billion in banks is being stolen, the tens of billions in gold is now going to disappear uh, and, and stolen from the people of Libya. I mean, this is just so outrageous. Right. Uh, the, the, the frozen assets that the State Department has got custody of now, uh, the U.S. part, I don't know how many billion there are, but there are, there are quite a few billion. Uh, that's going to go into the Swiss bank accounts of these uh, face men uh, like Jalil, Jabril, uh, Hifter, the people who are running that Benghazi rebel council, and none of that will ever be seen as humanitarian aid. This is going to be a kleptocracy beyond your wildest Well, that's dreams. my next issue. Are they going to use Libya as their new al-Qaeda base to then menace the West? Yeah, you can imagine al-Qaeda piracy in the Mediterranean. You know, it's funny, uh, and if you go back to American history, uh, in the early 1800s... Thomas the Jefferson. The big concern was uh, the, the Barbary pirates, right? Stephen Decatur and all this. So it meant that these 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 ports in North Africa were uh, the bases of uh, of pirates, and the, the pirates, of course, worked with the British because the British brought protection, others couldn't, the U.S. couldn't and didn't, and therefore had to wage these wars. Today, you've got the U.S. intervening in a place like Libya to reestablish piracy, but this time under Al Qaeda auspices. So this is going to have a big effect on the entire Mediterranean littoral, from Spain to Italy to Greece, all the way across. This is now going to fundamentally change what the Mediterranean looks like. Uh, and again, it's, it's going to be an open sore. If, if you didn't want Al-Qaeda to have a sanctuary, if that was the point of Afghanistan, they have just been given a, a sanctuary, or at least it seems All right, so. Webster, stay there. Let's, the do five, Europe. let's do five more minutes in prisonplanet.tv overdrive. The, the official radio show is over. See you back tomorrow, 11 a.m. Spread the word about the broadcast. Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. A very wealthy U.S. citizen is predicting that in 2011, we will witness the most important day in America in more than 50 years. He says it will change everything about our lives. The way you shop, travel, invest, educate your children, and even how you take care of your health and your own family. Now, this man has made some outrageous predictions over the years. The crazy part is, he's usually right. You see, he predicted the collapse of GM, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and America's biggest mall owner, General Growth Properties. In fact, Barron's called his work a dire prophecy. Recently, he created a video, which you can watch online for free, detailing his biggest and most important prediction yet. And it's a real eye-opener. 
I can't stress this enough. You should at least watch this free video online today. He explains everything you need to know, including simple steps you can take to protect yourself. You can find the video at www.endofamerica3.com. That's endofamerica, the number three, dot com. Watch the free video at www.endofamerica3.com. That's endofamerica3.com. Coast to coast, direct from Austin. You're listening to the Alex Jones Broadcasting Network. Network. Okay, folks, we're in a little overdrive here at PrisonPlanet.tv with Webster Tarpley. Webster was bringing up the fact that reporters are being shot. A lot of things are happening, and uh, Russia Today has gone with the story that a CNN reporter threatened one of their reporters and said, you'll be lucky to basically get out of here alive. He interpreted that as a death threat. Webster, tell us about that. Yeah, this is Mahdi Darius Nazem Roaya, and he's, he's a guy that, that Russia Today had been interviewing basically every hour during the night now between Sunday and Monday. And some of these reports were very dramatic because he'd be sitting there and he said the security has disappeared uh, and there you could hear gunfire outside. There were snipers outside of the hotel. He tried to go out and put up placards saying press, TV, don't shoot. And snipers were shooting at him as he was trying to put up these placards. Uh, and during the night you could see him walking around the corridors of this hotel, very eerie. But he says, now this is, Darius Mahdi Nazem Rawaya says on Russia Today that the CNN correspondent, or one of them, came to him and conveyed what he interpreted as something threatening, which was, uh, I, I'm surprised you're still putting out anti-NATO news. You know, that could be very dangerous. So this, I think, can be interpreted uh, quite easily. And, of course, this is then the context of Franklin Lamb having been shot uh, at the pool of a different hotel. The first incident is at the Rixos. The second one is at a hotel, I call it the Radisson. It's a 26th story, but I think it used to be called the Carinthia, and that's what everybody calls it there. Anyway, he was w walking by the pool. Uh, a funny story, he, he had a bicycle, and he was out riding around Tripoli to see what the story was yesterday morning, Sunday morning. He did fine, and he found no particular evidence of, of rebel forces. He gets back to the hotel, he puts the bicycle aside, and he walks by the pool, and he thinks he was shot by a sniper out of the abandoned Marriott Hotel nearby. So uh, that would seem to have been pretty much planned. I, I have to say, Franklin, when I was there, I saw him repeatedly. He would go to the pool, spend an hour there every day. And then you've got, uh, there's, a, there's a written report from Thierry Maison, of France, uh, Franklin, Franklin Lamb is from the U.S., Nazem Roaya from Canada, Maison from France, and he put out a, a, a basically a summary of what had happened. Right? By the way, he's a very well-respected reporter in France. Yes, and he's, he's somebody who has uh, lived in the Middle East. I mean, he's felt, he felt obliged to live in the Middle East since Sarkozy has come in because uh, it was getting too dangerous to be, to be in France, and uh, th that seems to be the trend. Anyway... Well, there's no doubt the tyrants have gone into overdrive. They're trying to bring down Syria right now, too. Yes. Now, I think this is going to be a, a totally different thing. Uh, the merit of Gaddafi, I think Gaddafi has many merits. Uh, in, in terms, There's no need to apologize for Gaddafi compared to most of the people in the U.S. empire. This is clearly many cuts above. But the, the real merit of Gaddafi lately has been that he blocked this process of the color revolutions. Remember, they said, we got Ben Ali of Tunisia, we overthrew in, in January, and then we overthrew Mubarak of Egypt in February, and they really thought they could overthrow Gaddafi in March. And now it's August, and he is still fighting, he's still in the field, and who knows how long it will last, uh, and, and what the outcome will be. I, I wouldn't want to guess. The... It, Libya has not been kind to invaders. You can go back to Lucan's Farsali. No, I understand that. They've claimed he's fallen five or six times previous, but it, it, it looks like this could be it. And then the loved uh, peaceful civil war can then start and really get some deindustrialization right, going. Well, the civil war, I mean, that's, that's what it has been. But the, the effect of Gaddafi's resistance has been that the entire timetable was slowed down. I mean, they wanted Gaddafi gone in March, Assad gone in in April or May, and then they'd be on to Algeria by now, 
and they might even get around to the monarchies, right? Morocco and Jordan and Saudi Arabia are certainly also on the same list. If they can be uh, intimidated, fine. If not, they're going to be overthrown. So Gaddafi has more or less put on the brakes and slowed it or practically stopped it for six months, and that's a merit. All right, we'll have to follow this more, Webster, as it unfolds. Pray for peace over there, and I don't mean the type that comes with 2,000-pound bombs. And, and if you want to look at my Twitter feed, you'll find the numbers to the, um, the State Department. Absolutely, the Webster, we're out of time. See everybody back tomorrow live. There are limitless ways to go into business for yourself, but most involve substantial capital and risk. Our InfoWarsTeam.com operation is different. We promote premium quality health, energy, and skincare products using dynamic, caring personal.